Mlumba faced a major decision. He accepted the Christian teaching of having only one wife. He had four. Local tradition accepted polygamy. My wives have been faithful and kind to me. But I must let three of them go. Lord Jesus, help me to do what is right. I have something to say. I have decided to become a Christian. And by doing so, I must have only one wife. You. You will stay here with me. And the three of you will have to go. I don't want to hurt anyone. But in my conscience, I cannot do otherwise. What has happened? What have we done to deserve this? People will laugh at us. You woman, what charm have you given to our husband? Nobody's to blame for this. I have decided to change my ways of living. And it is very difficult. But I promise always to provide for you and look after you. Because you've all been good and faithful wives to me. I have decided for Jesus. Maridide. Kuruwa Yesu. Ego te baptizo in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Mlumba helps his wife regularly in the garden, something that was unheard of at the time. Say, Mlumba! Has this new religion made you become a woman? You don't mind about them, don't you? We used to walk 42 miles to Kampala to receive the sacrament. 
Ego te absolvo a peccatus tuis in nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Father Ludell continued instructing him. Are you sure I'll be all right without these fetishes? Father, we depend on them. Fetishes have no power. Our sign is the cross of Jesus Christ. Mlumba brought this teaching back to his people in Mityana. You cannot put faith in fetishes. Rather put faith in the power of God. We all carry the cross of Jesus. But our ancestors have always used this thing to protect themselves and to bring good fortune. Yes, and if we throw them away, we will surely die. And we will bring destruction to ourselves forever. I was afraid in the beginning, but I threw mine away. And as you can see, nothing has happened to me. These people are a threat to us. They are just undermining our authority. They will take away all the honor that is ours. Let's go and warn the king against them. Don't you remember about the foretelling of the coming of the poor white men? That they will come and torture, destroy and reduce us to nothing? That they will take away all our people from us? And we shall be receiving very little gifts. And that they will be having much stronger powers than ourselves. These people are terrible. Let us threaten them. Let each one of us do all that we can to get rid of them. Kill them, if necessary. The priests and the priestesses managed to convince the king that the missionaries were a threat to him and they had to leave the country. Soon after the missionaries had left, plague, smallpox and sleeping sickness broke out, killing many. The Christians cared for the sick, baptizing those at the point of death. They showed love and concern for those who, because of sickness, had become outcasts in the society. Many came to the faith because of the love they had experienced. The spreading of the faith became the responsibility of the local Christians. Kagwa, who led the royal band, gave instruction to some of its members. Balikudembe, who was in charge of the pages, did the same. Kabaka Mutesa died. He was succeeded by his son Mwanga. Mwanga allowed the missionaries to return. They were amazed when they found that the little community of 300 had grown substantially during the two year absence. The future looked bright. Hoc est enim corpus meum. The political situation in neighboring countries aroused fear in the new king, King Mwanga, that his country might be invaded. The local chiefs and the prime minister used this opportunity to discredit the missionaries, accusing them of being in league with foreigners. A climate of hostility and suspicion developed. At this time, a new Anglican bishop, Bishop Huntington, arrived in the country from the east. 
it had been foretold that white man would come from the east and take over the land. So Bishop Huntington was perceived as a threat. His life was in great danger. The king called a meeting of his councillors to discuss the situation. I have heard from the council. Prime Minister, what do you have to say about the situation? Your Majesty, the missionaries are in league with the foreigners. That man is in league with the foreigners. And the foreigners are here to grab our land. Your Majesty, they are here to fulfill the prophecy that says that he who will overthrow the kingdom will come from the east. But we need not fear much, Your Majesty because we know the prophecy and we know the man is here. So let us end this prophecy. Let us end the man. Let us end everything. Let us save our kingdom, Your Majesty. You have spoken very well. But my good friend, Barikudembe, is unusually silent. What is it that makes you quiet? Your Majesty, you and I know the prophecy. Everyone on the land knows it. It's true, this man is a foreigner. But he's only a missionary, like these other missionaries. I have no problem with the missionaries so far. I have known prophecies in this land, Your Majesty, that did not come true. But I also know that it is our duty to protect the land. That is why I plead with you, Your Majesty, let us have them sent back to the land they came from. Please, do not kill them. Ah. No, Your Majesty. Deal with the problem. Kill them. No, Your Majesty. In that way, you'll have their blood on your hands. Please, do not kill them. Don't listen to him, Your Majesty. He's a Christian. He's a traitor. He's part of them. It's true what he says that I'm a Christian, and in that way, I'm a part of them. But it's also true that I'm a subject of this land. And in that way, I'm a part of this land. No, Your Majesty. Here, he brags because he's a Christian. How sure are we that you are not plotting this throne with them? No, Your Majesty. No, Mukasa. I thought you are my lawyer servant. Are you siding with the white man against me? Yes. No. Leave me. Your Majesty, let me try to... For some time, Malikudembe was protecting the pages from what he believed to be the corrupting influence of the king. The prime minister, who was envious of Malikudembe, sought every opportunity to undermine him. For some time, I have been looking for these pages. Whenever I call upon them, these pages are not there. Your Majesty, it is Malikudembe who keeps them away from you. He incites them. Right now, he's even teaching members of your court how to become Christian. He even accuses you of immorality. Your Majesty, Barikudebe is not your friend. He's a traitor and not to be trusted. When a friend turns into a traitor, I have no alternative. Prime Minister, Deal with the traitor. Katonda chita fa singa vyo na. Tufuka midewa no maso gofu wa badubo. Kweba zaimu kama, roku tutonda no tusa kumsienu. Kusaba otuongira amanyi, otuongiri. the duty of killing me, my friend. Tell Kabaka Mwanga that he has condemned me unjustly, but that I forgive him with all my heart. However, he should repent or else he will have... Balikudembe was beheaded and burnt in Kampala 